And this is how we do it. If you can hear me, that is. An update on my extraction in here. I have now gone up through the roof like I originally planned, not through here. I've taken out that silly bathroom fan. A very good mate of mine, James, thank you so much, James, has supplied me with some extraction equipment and I now have some ducting going through the roof. That is now going to this awesome new pump, which does about 570 cubic meters a minute of extraction. So plenty of extraction now. That's going through out the wall and then comes out the bottom of the eave on a vent outside. I won't go outside because it is pissing with rain. So now that we've set up the uh, booth and we've done some painting in it and we've got our moulds here all painted, ready to put some cloth in, uh, we are ready to start cutting out some fabric and getting ready to mix some resin. So first things first, I'll run you through my process. Now that we've got these lovely painted moulds and you see this, this, they're actually quite textured behind the paint. It's actually quite rough. That is on purpose so that we can get the layout to stick. If this was glossy, there's a couple of kind of glossy areas, like a bit more up here, then the resin doesn't tend to stick to it and the paint can flake off because of just the poor um, surface adhesion. So this is quite rough. That's on purpose. So we should get good adhesion of the paint. I also will use a adhesive promo adhesion promoter before I lay up on this. Now, because these molds are so bloody heavy, um, I don't like chucking the whole thing in a bag. Um, I'll do this a lot with a lot of other moulds, chuck the whole mould in a bag, but it is just too difficult not to end up tearing the bag. Um, so I run um, my tacky tape, get some tacky tape here. I run that around the edge of the mould here, because that allows me to just put a bag straight on top of it and suck against the mould surface. However, now we've got paint lines on here, and because I didn't mask the flange beforehand, I have to remove the paint. Otherwise, if any of that paint starts flaking off or coming unattached from the mould, because it does have a wax release, uh, release agent underneath it, um, then all it's going to do is introduce air into the bag. So, I get myself a razor blade, and I literally come along and start getting underneath that paint and peeling it off, like so. So that we can stick that tacky tape straight onto the surface. And of course, now we're starting to peel the paint off, you can get an idea of what the colour is going to look like on this aircraft. So you can see we've got our white stripes um, with a clear coat where the black area is going to be with the carbon. And then I've got the, uh, the fluoro backed with a red. So I have a, um, a fluoro red pigment backed with a um, straight PMI red pigment. And so now we have cleaned up the flanges of of our paint so we won't get any leaks through into a bag and we have gone around and sealed the edges with some tacky tape which is also called mastic or um, bag sealant tape um, all sorts of different names depending on where you are um, so yes now it is getting ready to chop up some toes to put around our detailing areas because um when you have a nice sort of sharp corner in here um, your fabric will just bridge over that and you'll leave a nice little air bubble all the way around here. So we need to put some toes in there and places like in the wing seat in here as well. And you know, the apex of the front of the wing there and the trailing edge there. Now I have all the fabric is cut out. So we have a 160 GSM Techstream outer. We have a 200 GSM Uni. Now. This is for a slope slash DS model, so this is being built quite tough and simple. So the reason why we have uni over such a large area is that it's going to reinforce the front section of the wing by adding thickness across the whole section. Um, I've also got some doubler patches where the servos are going to mount, because this is the top skin here. So we want to make sure when the servos mount onto that top skin that they're going to have enough support. On the bottom skin here, same thing, so the 170 GSM, 160 GSM tech stream, followed by uh, 200 uni, again right to the very leading edge, and we also have a 200 GSM uh, Kevlar tape, which will be forming our live hinge. Now I've got my 
pieces of bag cut out. So there's two pieces of bag there, one for each half. And I have my compo flex cut out. Now, if people here are wondering what compo flex it is, it is a release film, so it's like a peel ply with a breather attached on the other side. So it is a uh, two-in-one unit, which makes things so much quicker and easier when laying up. Now we have the wing skins for the main wing under vacuum. I made sure I put plenty of resin in the top skin because just make it look all nice. Uh, you can see the resin's coming through into that breather. All the excess, same here. Obviously I've pulled up a little bit higher around where there are some features. That's why you're seeing more resin pulling there. That's all sucking down, holding vacuum. The, uh, my vacuum pump sits up here. I've got reservoirs coming out. Um, which then feed into my lines. I have a well, I have an analog gauge here, which has my current pressure. I also have a main switch here, uh, a pressure adjust here. Um, it sits with a, a target, so I can set my target pressure by this knob here, as well as got a current pressure and the pump status, whether it's on or off, depending on um, where the relay is set. I'm now starting to prep for laying up the fuselage. Um, this is my stilet. It is basically a rod which I stretch my bladder over. Um, so I have my pressure line come in here that comes at the back of the fuselage mold. Um, I have at various locations holes to inflate the bladder just so it's not being locked off in any way. Uh, my bladder consists of Qualitex latex balloons. So these are Qualitex here. So these are the super large ones, the 160 Qs. All right, and there we go now. We have my bladder put together. So we've got a balloon to there, double backing itself there, and another balloon to the front. And that's doubled up for two. So if one fails, one pops, then there's a backup one. And that will sit inside the fuselage like that. Now one thing I've learnt through inflation bladder moulding is that you must block off um, areas in the mold like this where the balloon can inflate into a corner and then pop because it's a sharp apex um, so the way I mitigate that is I shape up a bit of polystyrene soft polystyrene so it's squishable and that's going to sit 
into this location here and basically form a dam so that the balloon can't expand into this little corner here and burst because that's where most of my balloons are burst in here or in the back here so then I have another one here which will sit nicely in the back there to block off that and then make a nice uniform cavity so currently I actually have because I'm going to inflation bladder this I've got um, uh, the skins for the fin because the inflation bladder doesn't go up into here I've got skins for the fin plus some foam to make a solid foam core and that will also block off this cavity here to stop the balloon going up into here and bursting got this all laid up clammed up together hope everything's sitting in the right place still we'll find out once we open up it's too late now i have the inflation bladder coming out the back of the mold that is hooked up to a regulator here the bladder is slowly inflating in there i'm going to leave it at around about five psi to start with so i slowly increase the bladder up to around about 10 psi as i found you don't need any more than that but I'll let it sit at 5 psi for around about oh, 5 minutes before I then crank it up to 10 psi from then on. And that's it. That's inflation bladder moulding. Um, this has been set up to around about 10 psi now. It has been slowly pushing out all excess resin. As you can see there, all excess resin coming out of there. And along the flange, all that excess resin is now being pushed out of the mould. Here's quite a lot. And underneath there is a, is a bit which has come out as well. <sighs> Wing skins are still curing there, so keeping things at the temperature will help things cure nicely. Um, yeah. Now I've missed a few key parts here. Um, I've laid up the tailplane and the canopy. So this canopy I did, I didn't do with the white 2K, I did with acrylic super cheap auto spray can paint. But you can see how the surface has actually come out quite glossy. Now that ain't going to stick to a layup. So this is where the plastic primer comes into it. It'll give this a quick spray. Doesn't need much, just a little bit both sides. That'll etch the surface and allow me to stick things. I've also done it to that as well. I actually forgot to do it to the wings and the fuselage. So hopefully they come out alright. And now we have an entire plane in the bag. Well, one's inflation bladder, rest are in a bag. So canopy over there now, just done that. So I've four layers of ADGSM and the vacuum. We have the wing skins and we have the tail plane. That is all the parts. There's no wing joiner, there's no nose cone. Makes it nice and easy. 